Jenny Ertman and Elizabeth Pena were two friends who were raped and killed on June 24, 1993 by a gang of six in T.C. Jester Park in Texas. Jennifer was 14 and Elizabeth was 16. The two girls were leaving a friend's pool party when they decided to take a shortcut past some railroad tracks so they could make their 11.30 p.m. curfew. As they approached the tracks, there happened to be a gang there who had just finished holding an initiation for a new member. The gang was called the Black and White Gang. The members of the gang were Sean Derrick O'Brien, Jose Madeline, Venancio Madeline, a 14-year-old minor, Efren Perez, the newly initiated member Raul Villarreal, and the leader of the group, Peter Cantu. The initiation involved Raul having to fight each member of the gang until he lost consciousness, which he did temporarily after fighting three members. When the girls started walking toward the tracks, Peter thought it was a man and a woman, and out of frustration of not being able to fight Raul, he said to his gang that he wanted to jump and fight the man. Following his orders, his gang ran after the girls and caught Elizabeth, and then pulled her down the incline from the tracks. Jenny ran back to Elizabeth as she heard her friend scream for help and got caught herself. The girls were then raped by all members of the gang. In court, the gang members' confessions indicated that there were no less than two people raping the girls at one time. They were raped vaginally, orally, and anally for over an hour. One of the members said that during a brag session, one of the gang members said that by the time he got to her, she was loose and sloppy. Another bragged about having virgin blood on him. Venancio Madeline testified that he was running back and forth between Peter and his brother trying to get them to leave, but Peter just kept telling him to get some. He broke down and raped Jennifer. When the gang was done, Peter came to the conclusion that they now had to kill the young girls because they might be able to identify them. The gang pulled the girls into nearby woods where they were hidden and told Venancio to stay behind because he was too little to watch. O'Brien took off his red nylon belt, and he and Via Real started to strangle Jennifer with it, both murderers pulling on each side until the belt broke. They then continued to strangle her with her own shoelaces. Cantu, Jose Madeline, and Efren Perez then killed Elizabeth with shoelaces, even after she cried, begged, and tried to bargain for their lives. They were kicked and beaten before they died. After they were done strangling the girls, they then proceeded to kick their bodies and stomp their necks in to ensure their death. Villarreal, Jose Madelin, Perez, and Cantu all then went back to Cantu's place, where he lived with his brother Joe Cantu and his sister-in-law, Christine Cantu, who was 16 years old. Christina asked Villarreal why he was bleeding and asked Perez why he had blood on his shirt. Madelin answered her simply and said that they had fun and that details would appear on the news. Then he admitted that they raped two girls. He even made a comment that the bitch wouldn't die and it would have been easier with a gun. The gang then started to swap money and jewelry they had taken from the girls, in which Madelin took a ring with an E on it to give to his own girlfriend. When the gang left, Christina urged Joe to report what happened. She felt horrible about the girls and their families, so Joe anonymously tipped Crime Stoppers to what had happened and where they could find the bodies. The bodies were found four days after the girls' deaths on June 28, 1993. Their bodies were so decayed that their dental records had to be used for identification. The medical examiner testified that Elizabeth's two front teeth were knocked out of her head before she died. Cantu had kicked several of her teeth out with his steel toe boots, and Jennifer's ribs were broken after she died. Jennifer Ertman's father, Randy Ertman, was about to have an interview with a reporter about his missing daughter when he heard an officer through the cameraman's police scanner say that they found two bodies. Randy Ertman then took control of the news van and drove to the scene where the bodies were. Police officers had to hold him back as he screamed, Does she have blonde hair? Luckily, officers were able to keep him away from the gruesome sight. The brutality of the rape shocked all of Houston County. The scene was so bad, Hardened officers were tearing up at the sight of the girls' bodies. All the gang members were caught and sentenced to the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Peter Cantu, Jose Medellin, Raul Villarreal, Sean Derrick O'Brien, and Efren Perez were all given the death sentence. 14-year-old Venancio Medellin, who did not participate in the murder but in the rape, was sentenced to the maximum of 40 years in prison because he was a minor. Although after this, 
the Supreme Court of the United States banned executions of people who committed their crimes while underage. This commuted Perez's and Villarreal's sentences to life in prison. Sean O'Brien was the first to be executed in July 2006. His final words to the victim's families watching his execution were, I am sorry, I have always been sorry, O'Brien said, holding his head up and looking straight at relatives of his victims. It is the worst mistake that I have ever made in my whole life. Not because I am here, but because of what I did, and I hurt a lot of people, you and my family. He repeated again and again that he was sorry. Before this case, O'Brien was linked by evidence to another murder six months prior to killing Jennifer and Elizabeth, but was never charged. The body of Patricia Lopez, 27, was found at a Houston park. She had been raped, disemboweled, and her throat slit. A beer can with O'Brien's fingerprints was found under the remains of the woman. Can 2 was linked to this murder as well. Jose Medellin, who was executed in 2008, tried to appeal by using his international position. He was born in Mexico and argued that he should have been allowed assistance from the Mexican consulate before the trial. Medellin's impending execution became an international controversy since the state did not hold a hearing about whether the inability for Medellin to meet with Mexican consular officials harmed his defense. Both families of Jennifer and Elizabeth were strongly in favor of his execution. Before he was given lethal injection, his final words were this, I'm sorry that my actions brought you pain. I hope this brings the closure to what you seek. Don't ever hate them for what they do. Never harbor hate. The last one of the gang members to be executed was the leader, Peter Cantu. He was executed in 2010 on August 17th. He offered no words of apology or remorse before dying. The brutality of this case led to two major changes in Texas state policies. Judge Bill Harmon allowed Jennifer's father, Randy Ertman, to directly talk to Cantu, something the courts didn't normally have family do before. The second policy change was in viewing executions. This case was vital for getting the Texas law changed so that victims of murdered family members could watch killers of their loved ones die. Elizabeth's father, Adolfo Pena, felt the deaths that the rapists got were too good for them. Put it this way, I wish my daughter could have died the way he died today. Was it no pain? These girls went through an awful lot of pain when they died, said Pena, who was wearing a white t-shirt with a photo of the two girls printed on the front. When asked about Cantu's silence, he said this, There's nothing he would have said to me that would have made any difference. He did a horrendous crime to these two girls, and he deserved to die. And 17 years later, he died, not soon enough. 17 years is a long time to have something eating on you like that. We think about those girls every day.